Hi, and welcome to Discovering Dataflex with me, Johan Drotfeldt. This is episode 10. And uh, today we're going to look at classes and objects. We've been briefly touching on uh, objects before, but I want to dedicate this video uh, to separate the class structure and the object structure because um, since I'm a developer from a, a regular kind of language like PHP or C Sharp, C++, uh, classes and objects are used a little bit differently in Dataflex than in uh, uh, the other languages. So therefore I want to talk about these two parts of Dataflex. And I also think that we've gone so far in uh, developing applications so that you need to have a deeper understanding of these objects in order to proceed to the next level. And um, normally when you try to um, uh, talk about uh, the basics of a programming language, you start out by uh, looking at uh, what kind of types there are and uh, if cases and while loops and stuff like that. But I think that's too basic for now. We may make a video later when we go through all of those, but right now I just want to make sure you understand the frames and the framing of uh, how these things are set up. So let's start. Classes. If you don't know anything about classes, then classes uh, has uh, inheritance. And uh, for instance, if you have Lego, it's a concept. Um, you know what Lego is. It's a lot of different pieces. And you can have blocks and flats, or, or um, I don't know if they call flats, but uh, I just gave them that name. And if you have a block, you might have it like two by two, one by two, two by four, two by six, two by eight, one by eight. Uh, you know, there are different sizes. And uh, in this case, I just put color as an example, as a property on Lego, because you can have the same color on whatever Lego you want. So the Lego is a property that's been inherited down on the subclasses and uh, you could actually change the color of a Lego piece by repainting it. Uh, but when you create a Lego piece, you cannot really cut it in half or, or mount another Lego piece to it to make it a bigger one. It's still the same Lego piece. So here are the models for those Lego pieces. And this structure is basically the blueprint of a Lego piece. And if you want to play with an ex uh, actual Lego piece, you need to instantiate. So you say B is a block of two by four, and then you get the Lego piece with the property blue, for instance, in this case. So in order to make a program, you need lots of Lego pieces. So you start by creating the Lego pieces and then you use some different kind of function or references or objects uh, in uh, different scenarios to connect the pieces and create a nice program. This is the normal way which you do it in basically every programming language except maybe JavaScript that has a little bit different way of handling objects and Dataflex. And this is the way that Dataflex does objects. You actually have a structure where you put the objects. And this, this comes in really handy when you are um, creating views as you've seen, because then you have the code and the object structure in the same place. So you don't have to go one place to create the objects and then another place to structure them and sort them and in order to display them in the correct way. So you do everything in one place. And 
this gives you a complete Lego set uh, directly, a complete model. And it also has some specific properties where you can talk to other objects in the um, in the tree. And I will show you some samples of this now in the Visual Studio. So here we have a simple sample of uh, a label and a input form and a button. And you can see we have a web view. This is the frame here. We have a web form with a label and it's here. This is the web form and we have a button. And now we can do that if we click the button. We want to show some text in the um, form. So we have a procedure in the form and we can send show text to oform, which is the name of this one. So let's run this and see that it works. Now we have sample one here, and I click, and I get the text in the form. Now, for sample two, this is the same setup. We have uh, the form and the button, and we have this function that is sending um, the call to O form. But in this case, we are going to make a class. And actually, if you want to comment something out, you press Control K, and you can kind of switch it back and forth. K, K. And now I have this web form here, and I extend it and make my own class, which I called C Web Form Two Underscore One. And two is just for the example because we have many samples, so every sample will have their own number here. But the one is the important you should look at for further samples. And in order to use that one, I'm going to switch this one out so that my object uses my new class. And now you see I do not have the function here of the procedure. The procedure is moved up to the class. So now when I click the button it should find the O form and it should actually go into the class and see if the class has the function or the procedure in this case. So let's run this sample. Sample 2, and I click the button, and I get the text. So, now what can we do? We can uh, extend this even further with a sample 3. Now we make another class, which is number 2, and we change the 3. No the one with number two, and we basically do the same. We call O form. O form finds that this is of type web form two, so it goes into web form two, which is of web form one, and web form one has a function or procedure that can handle this. So let's try this. And we have sample 3, and we click, and we get the result we expected. On to sample 4. In this case, 
I'm going to make a procedure in Webform 2 that has the same name as Webform 1. And I'm going to use this forward send show text. And that will call the show text in Webform 1. So that will call this one. And then I will read the value of the label and add that to this text. So what I want to happen here is that I want this text first and then I want this text. And I want them to appear in the box. So let's see what's happened. Sample 4. Yeah, and we got the class 1, and then we got from the class number 2. And sample number 5. Let's see, what have I done here? Now I only have this web form 1 with the same show text. And I have a O form one of this type. So now I'm adding a procedure to this O form one that is calling class one first, and then it is doing whatever this objects want to be doing. And I also want to add an O form 2, which has the same um, thing, but this is object 2. So I should get class 1, object 1, class 2, object 2. Maybe I should switch this label to label 2 as well, so we can see that it's here. And in order to call both of these when I click the button, I need to add an additional call to the second one. And if this is confusing, then you just watch the video once more and I think you will understand how this goes. We call the form, show text, so form one, show text, you go in here, forward send to this one, call this one, which updates the field this one web gets the value of the field into my value and concatenates with the text of the object and stores that with web set in the value so this should have class one object one and then class one object two let's see if we manage this class one object one class one object two so we got it to work now for the last sample and this is the broadcast which is a very nice feature to be using sometimes and it's used for example when you do a clear in dataflex then all the fields are cleared at the same time and you don't set a clear O form 1, clear O form 2, clear O form 3. Basically what you do is you make a broadcast send show text to parent self. And we're going to remove these two so we don't call them. And if you want to know more about the broadcasts, because there are broadcast recursive and up and down and, and some other stuff, you can just set the cursor here and press F1 and then you get the documentation of what you can do. Recursive, recursive up, non-stop, get, set, send, message. You can read more about it here. So what this one should do is it should look at the parent of the self and the self is this object. So the parent is 
our web view and then it wants to broadcast to all these objects one by one and send show text to them so it will send show text here and show text here just in the as in the sample before and uh, I removed the class here because it was like overkill I just want to see that these two get called at the same time but if I had class one and uh, all that other logic then that would be the same as the previous sample so let's try this broadcast number six and now we've got object one and object two and that rounds it up for this video and uh, I hope to see you again soon bye for now